Hey, I'm Steve Berg, and you're listening to Voyage to the Stars. This is a sci-fi comedy told through improvisation. What does that mean? Well, we have a framework to guide the story, but all the dialogue is completely improvised. So sit back and enjoy this unique voyage to the stars. Captain's Log, 8XBE. This is Captain Tucker Lentz coming to you from a shuttle that is bound for Space Station Asia. This mission is very important to me as I'm going to discover what happened to the crew of Destiny, the science crew that was sent to investigate a wormhole almost 30 years ago. The entire crew and the ship disappeared. This mission holds a special place in my heart as two members of that crew were my parents. It is what I, ironically, am destined to to do. I don't know if that's irony or just a coincidence, but it sounded cool to me. This is going to be a fairly easy shuttle trip to the space station, but all I know for sure is that I'm ready for this mission, ready as I'll ever be, and confident in myself. I can do 50 push-ups rather easily. I eat well. Excuse me, sir. Oh, I'm oh so hello. Sorry. Yes. If I could just hmm? ask you to turn off your large electronics, we are well, getting ready to depart. Oh, so oh, we are oh, gonna oh, need oh, oh, I'm sorry. To, just to be for the safety oh, yeah, of everybody no, I, else. I, I, I understand. Just, I, I walked in here and I, I was just, uh, <laughs> okay. you know, I'm just having, having fun. I, I, I know I'm not the captain of the ship. I just. I'm gonna ask <laughs> you to just, take that hat off, sir. That looks uh, like it could this harm hat. someone. Hey, you know, please do not kick me off this ship. This costs oh, me a lot of money. No, sir, you were in no danger of getting kicked off. You know, I'm an insurance salesman, and it's taken a number of years save with this money and uh you know i would love I, to hear I, the story of your life sir i do need to uh, address the other passengers no problem I have a thank s- you very much no thank you sir thank you <laughs> at this time passengers are required to secure all belongings and ensure all seats are in their fully upright positions when this vessel is fully docked at the station passengers may experience a mild popping in their ears due to the pressurizing of the cabin should any bleeding occur please utilize the gauze pads located in the seat cubby in front of you and now a word from our captain hello friends of space the Rankford Society, in conjunction with promotional science videos for schools, the Rankford subsidiary, proudly presents the Asia Space Station. <laughs> Hello, I'm Trip Hogg, the captain of the Asia, and I couldn't be more excited to welcome you to one of the greatest achievements of human civilization, tens of thousands of miles away from Earth, at the site of the great wormhole. The finest minds at Ringford Corp have constructed a state-of-the-art research lab dedicated to observing and cataloging scientific breakthroughs. We are so happy you decided to join us for our last week in operation. If you need anything at any time, come talk to old Captain Tripp, will you? And we can't wait to show you around. Oh, yeah, awesome. Oh, man, this is going to be great. I have been waiting so long to get up there, man. Really hope that you are talking to yourself and huh? not into that machine. Are you going to shut it down? I'll shut it down. Science entry Asia 12.90A. Lead science officer Elsa Rainford reporting. I guess I'll try to get this out before a tourist comes in here to find the bathroom. So, basically, this is my last week on the ship. The ship is shutting down. It's like a fire sale here. People are just taking things. Someone just literally took the water fountain, which had been turned into a tequila fountain, so it's really fine. To say I'm disappointed in the process of my six-month tenure here as lead science officer on the Asia is an understatement. I came here to change the world to prove to my family that I'm worth something. It's not what I thought it was going to be. This is basically a tourist trap. The the Iowa station the other day was hooked up to like this jungle juice thing and I forgot and I just kept burning my eyes with, I think it was rum. So 
To say I'm disillusioned is an understatement. Nobody ever invited me out, after, by the way, after the first two weeks. I mean, sometimes I'll go up to them and be like, hey, do you know who my dad is? This is the Rainford Station. Like, they own this thing, and then they'll just go, ha, 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 have a shot. This is my dream. And yet I come here, and it's just... It's become just a laughing stock. And I'd, I'd like to say that going back to Earth, maybe I'll take my knowledge. I mean, I have a lot of knowledge. I have 10 half degrees. I mean, technically three of them are two, two thirds of a degree because Sephardic poetry just didn't click with me. Anyway, I'm gonna have to go home and my family, it's gonna take me back in like the loser that I am and say, hey, maybe go have a desk job at our company, which basically owns Australia. And I'll be like, no, thank you. My brother can do that. I am an independent woman who is literally one of the great thinkers of society, and I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I mean, look at that wormhole. I look out there and I think, this is where mystery is in this world, and I'm ready. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go to Captain Hogg and I'm gonna tell him, hey, guess what? I want to go into the wormhole, provide me with a way to go there and just put me in and, and go. And I'm going to study Sephardic poetry because now that I talk about it, I feel like a failure that I didn't finish that degree. Anyway, science entry out. Captain's log. It never ceases to amaze me when I step aboard the Asia. Look at this. There's the old space closet filled with space brooms, as many <laughs> space brooms as you'd need. Ah, the old molecular field enlarger, a revolutionary technology, incredibly difficult to build, and it appears my comrades are using it to research. Is that they're watching Ultimate Frisbee? Okay. Young man. Oh, hello. Uh. Ah! Captain Hogg. Trip Hogg, you probably recognize me from the welcoming video. Good to meet you. Good yeah. to meet you, Captain. Yeah. Uh, I, I consider myself a bit of a, of a captain myself. Uh, I could <laughs> see know. that by the way you were talking into your log there and really? touching things. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, you know, yeah. I've been watching you touch quite a few things aboard the ship here. How about a little tour? There's nothing I enjoy more than giving tours. Well, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I don't think I need a tour, but I'm sure these other people probably want to know where everything is on the ship. If you look down the corridor here to your right, you can see uh, several wormhole pictures on the wall. And wow. You'll also get that opportunity to take a photo of the wormhole. Whoa. Everyone likes a photo of the wormhole. Cool. <laughs> To this your left here, uh, what's your name, by the way, son? My, oh, sorry, my name? Yes. Tucker, how you doing? Tucky, Tucky. To your left, T Tucky. Tuck you'll see the dinner hall over here. We call it a mess hall on this ship. Mess hall, mess hall, got it. Now, see out the window here? Oh, oh boy, I've done this so many times. What, what are you interested in, Tucker? What, what, what do you want to see? Uh, well, sir, uh, you know, to be quite honest, I intend to be the best space captain that humanity's ever seen. Oh, that's great. I intended to be something, Tucky. I intended to man my own space station. That's what I intended. Now look what I'm doing. <laughs> Getting to spend a jovial time with you walking around a ship and pointing out brooms and a closet. Well, <clears throat> no sense in putting my stuff on you. Seem to be a nice young fellow. Here, take this pin. Pin it on your hat there with the rest of your pins, Tucky. I will honor this forever, Captain. Thank right. you. Captain? Captain yeah. Hogg? Elsa, yes. Uh, lead science officer, Elsa. That's yes, right. I understand who you are. By the way, your eyes smell of rum. Well, so does your breath. <laughs> That's because I am faced right now. What do you need, Elsa? I have an appeal to you. Please, go ahead. I'm sure you're familiar with my uh, disenchantment, with my trip here, and yeah. my yeah. service. Yes, Elsa, I, I know you're not happy about being here and what you're doing on the ship, but what's your problem, Elsie? The closing of the Aisha is heart-melting, and I would I like... I agree. I completely agree. I'm you know, sorry. Like my the, heart. the bathroom is over there. And so what I am appealing to you is that I would like to use your shuttle, your personal captain shuttle, to go into the wormhole. Here we go. Elsa, may I call you Elsa? Uh, you may call me lead science officer Elsa, absolutely. Of course, Elsa. There is no way in this man's universe that I'm going to let the daughter of the richest known person fall off into a black hole in space. I mean, technically, it's there's a difference between it's a, a black wormhole. hole and a wormhole. I need you to just do one thing for me. Could you read the uh, read the nameplate across my chest? It says Captain Trip. Oh, you could stop right there. It says Captain. Until you are Captain. 
ten, you will not be venturing off into a wormhole. Go back to your quarters right now, young lady. It will not happen. I Captain, feel- out! Hi, my name's Tucker. You know, I, I totally would fly you into that wormhole. You know, if I had a ship, I could do it. I mean, I, I, uh... Well, you know, if I was an angel, I'd have wings, and I'd also sparkle like a fairy. Uh-huh. I think... I think you sparkle now. Come on, Tucky! Nice to meet you. I'm sorry if I was passive-aggressive, but this has just been a really crushing day for me, okay? Don't steal anything! You're very smart. All right. Next stop on the gift shop, shall we, Tucky? Hey, Captain. You had to shoot a lot of aliens? <laughs> Everyone's an alien in space, Tucky. Hey, welcome to another episode of Chat Stew with your host, Stu Merkel. Yeah, you know, I'm just doing these recordings to share with everyone my hopes, my dreams, my fears. I mean, I realize no one's probably listening to this. I'm honestly just doing it because I'm bored. You know, it's great to be on the ship. It's better than being on Earth because I could be left alone, just kind of like cleaning toilets, which isn't that bad. I've had worse jobs. I'm from the Badlands pretty boring. Then I moved to Robopolis, which was great until they kind of like destroyed themselves by creating a thing called, I think it was like Skynet or something. Yeah, well, you know, this can be discussing a lot of cool things in this podcast and doing some unboxings, kind of checking out what's going on in this ship. And basically, I'm just going through people's stuff. Rummage, it's one of the perks of the job. So uh, here we go. First box. Let's see, what do we have here? Oh, this one, oh, whoa, 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 score, score, score. Hunt a human t-shirt, which is my, which is my favorite reality show on television. Ooh, and a beer koozie. And this last box I have in this room, oh! Jesus, what is that? Okay, 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 uh, obviously there's an alarm going off right now, and that means I'm gonna have to probably shut down the podcast for now because they are on to me. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay, so I don't, you guys obviously can't see this, uh, but there is a ship outside the wormhole that was not there before. So I don't know what that means. Anyways, this ruined the whole take completely and I'm gonna have to do this episode over, but I promise it's gonna be a lot more exciting. This one was not as good as it could be for a multitude of reasons. So uh, tune in next time to Chat Stew. Thank you. Science Entry Asia 12.90B. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh you guys. There is a spaceship that has come through the wormhole. And I mean, it, this is inc- insane. We've never had anything come out of the wormhole. We've only had one spaceship disappear into the wormhole. And guys, I am one of the first humans to see an alien, perhaps an alien craft come through the wormhole. I'm going to add it to my Elsa's wormhole biography when I write the biography that I've already formatted. I've picked out the typeface. It's very good. This is huge. Okay. It has graviton orbital satellites around it. Elsa, Elsa, I heard you boop boop beep me. What's going on? Um, Captain, would you look outside my port? I don't have time. Oh my God. Look at that. Oh my God. Yeah. It has DRS tanks on the side of it. Exactly. The lithium resonance. Oh, yes. I love this. We're actually having the rapport I always wanted with you. Uh, I've never wanted rapport with you, but I can't deny that we are actually having it right now. Captain, I would like to take your shuttle. I would like to explore this wormhole. I'm going to say something to you. (gasps) Go ahead. (gasps) Go ahead and do what you have to do, but promise me this. Mm -hmm. You will only take willing volunteers. I've learned that lesson in the past by taking along unwilling volunteers somewhere. That's called kidnap, Elsa. Mm. That doesn't bode well. Okay, Captain. Aye, aye. (laughs) I've always wanted to say that. Captain's Log, Alpha Ginormous Treat 123. I assume you can hear in the background by the alarms that are sounding. Something has uh, occurred here on the ship, and unfortunately our mission is being cut short. I'm being told that we're supposed to load up back onto the shuttle and head back to Earth. Uh, Gotta tell you, I'm pretty bummed about this. Um... Not quite sure uh, exactly what's going on. You know, a lot of people are scared, but I'm, you no, know, like ma'am, I said, ma'am, 
No, I need you to go ahead and leave that croquet set behind. I don't know why you unpacked that so quickly, but we are in an urgent situation uh, here. Excuse me. Oh, hi. It's yes, you. Yes. Hey, I'm just wondering exactly what is going on. Uh, uh, the, um, I, if you just look out the window, you will see that there is some sort of inexplicable the, ship that has appeared uh, out there. Yeah, oh my this is God. very serious, sir. So if you could just go ahead and turn around and start heading out back to the like shuttle. I would like to offer myself to help. Okay. Unless you're just like sacrificing yourself mutely. Uh, Whatever I would you say need. I don't need anything from you. So just your cooperation as you go ahead. Excuse me, sir. Ma'am, you cannot leave your child. No, you need to take your child. Okay. I'm sorry, sir. I'm just yeah. very busy right now. So I'm going to need your cooperation. Okay. And... Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stop. Uh, oh, you know, I just, I, I'm just going to go grab my backpack real quick. And, okay, and then, sir. I, uh, then I'll head back. Okay. All right. Okay. You're not going to believe this. There is a spaceship outside. I don't know if it's my parents' ship or if it's an alien ship or what it is. But all I know is that this is what I was sent up here for. This is what I was built for. I'm gonna find out what's on that ship. Uh, Everybody else is abandoning the ship, but a good captain does not do that. A good captain fights to the end, and a good captain finds uh, a space closet to hide in. Here we go, this is perfect. I believe I can fly. Marlene, Marlene, did you see that gentleman? Was he, he was panting very hard for some reason. Did he walk by here? Against my better judgment, I'm, I'm worried for his safety. No? Okay. You gotta do this, buddy. This is what you were built to do. Okay, uh, welcome to Stu Crew. This is gonna be a much better podcast than I All had right, the everyone. last one, okay? Excuse and- me, up here. Read the nameplate across my chest. That's right. It's Captain Trip Hogg. I can see a lot of you have worry on your face. A lot of you are concerned of your imminent deaths. There's reason for that. I suspect most of us will die today. Now, there appears to be a large ship of unknown origin. I do think it means us harm. Against my previous judgment, I would like Lead Science Officer Elsa to step forward. Hello, everybody. I have some prepared words. I am here to recruit any volunteers who would like to go with me in the shuttle to visit this foreign spacecraft. Now, I I know what you're thinking. Nature can be lethal, but nature does not hold any candle to man. I assure you that if we hold the line, we are in space, and we are not goons, and we are not bullies, so we could stick together. I I researched uh, stirring speeches throughout fiction, so just just bear with me. You're doing great, Elsa. Keep going. We could stay here. Hey, buddy, what what, 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 what are they talking about? Shh. Uh, Okay, okay. Anyway, so... What's happening right now? The lead science officer is talking about this. I met her. She's, she's really, she's really cool. Look, I'm in the middle of a podcast right now. Okay. Uh, yeah. So there is a wormhole out there right now. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Are you gonna keep on interrupting me while I'm doing this? Is, this is li- this is live streaming. My bad. And there's a ship around the wormhole, man. And so they're trying to get a team together, right? I'm what? sorry. I could just heard you. You're just literally recapping what I just did. Both of you should have been listening. Right. Are you guys going to line up or what? Line up line up for what? Would you like to go with me on the shuttle to explore yes. the wormhole? Yes, I'm See, good. I knew you would be up. I'm in. S- thank See, you, but Smuckers no, thank My name there. is Tucker. I'm yeah. reporting for duty. Oh, sm- okay, Smuckers. Tucker. Tucker, T- Tucker not okay. Smucker. So anyway, what about you? No, I'm good. I have to clean a toilet and Come stuff. Come on, buddy. I don't, I, I don't want to. You can do this, man. No, that's... I volunteer him. It's not in my purview. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Oh, oh, Elson, the guys are ready to go. You have two volunteers. That's all right. By my estimation, you're going to need about 38 people in all. Let, Don't worry. I'll get a whole crew. Let me help you with this one. If you hear your name called, please step up next to Elsa. But are we going to be transparent about t- we're taking them to the foreign oh, spaceship? Oh, yes, yes. We're taking you to the foreign spaceship to see what danger lies ahead. Please stop running. That's all right. I've locked the doors from Oh, okay. Outside. So this isn't kidnapping. Or like- it's just a gentle coercion mm-hmm. to get them on that ship. I'm so excited, man. Thank you so much for doing this with me, man. Tucker, just let me sign you, off, okay? You have no... Please, oh, it, please. And, and, and just, you know, it's it's Captain. Yeah. Okay, this has been the worst episode of Stew Crew ever. The next one is going to be great. We're going to okay? space, Yeah, man. we're going to space. We're already here. Single file. This has been Stu Merkel, and this was the Stew Crew. Captain's Log, LX-46. <laughs> 
It's happening, everybody. I am in space. Not that I <laughs> didn't know this was gonna happen, but hey, you know what? I am really stoked about it. <laughs> this is gonna be good. My whole life, people had tried to stop me from this moment happening. Finally, this long road is coming to a successful, fun ending. You know what? You know who I'm gonna dedicate this trip to? My Professor Abstol. <laughs> Well, Professor Abstol, who's in Flight Academy now? Me, on my way to a wormhole. That's what you get. Also, Dirk Granger. Good old Dirk Granger. Everybody loves Dirk Granger. Dirk Granger knows how to fly a spaceship. Dirk Granger doesn't crash the spaceship while he's trying to park it. Dirk Granger doesn't spill his drink all over the spaceship controls. Well, you know what, Dirk Granger? Where are you now? Ha <laughs> ha! That's right, Captain Tucker. Okay, there's other people around listening to this, so we're gonna wrap this up. This is Captain Tucker. To space and further. Captain out. Science entry Asia away shuttle 12.90C. This is Elsa Rankford, lead science officer and de facto leader of this shuttle. Except, uh, there's a, a gentleman named Tucker who's here and does have some captain background. Captain Tucker. You got it. I'm gonna call you that because you really requested it about 15,000 times on the way and I'm just gonna to defer to you and give you that title. I appreciate it, science officer. You're quite welcome. Uh, the synthetic compensator is a little bit uh, mm -hmm. wonky. Can you recalibrate that to uh, 15 decimals? Uh, yep. Great. Um, okay, um, let's see, okay, so that's gonna be uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this knob. No, that's, that's normally what. That's actually the volume for the stereo. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, my other ship, we did. Um, okay, mm -hmm. so that's gonna be this. Okay, these buttons right here. I'll go ahead and tap these guys a okay, couple great. times. The axionic neutral shield needs to be um, undeployed in order to approach the dock. Uh, I think I already undeployed it. It's not undeployed. It's actually nope. still up. It, my bad. I, if we don't do that soon, we're gonna die. Oh. So maybe just get on it. It's one of the basic five from flight school, so it's fine. Yeah. You're just a little rattled. It's we're in space. Oh, I'm excited I'm not, too. I, I assure you, science officer, I am not rattled. Uh, if anything, I am not rattled. I got it. You're not rattled. Uh, so go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you it's know, this uh, one right here. Just press it. Maybe uh, Stu? Uh, what? You want to get on that? Honestly, that's just not in my purview, and there's a union rule against it, and I just don't want to get in trouble. Plus, I left my personal coffee maker on in my sleeping quarters, and I'm stressing about that. So... No can do, my man. I mean, you could do that yourself. I know because you're from a rich, prestigious family. You don't do things yourself, but a lot of people calibrate things on their own. I'm going to go ahead and have to piggyback on what Stu just said there, you know. I'm I don't think you know where it is. No, I think we might be dealing with a privilege issue here is what I'm thinking. I think so. It's a class thing. I am just a little bit suspicious about your knowledge of how this very simple pod works. I mean, this is an away shuttle. It is standard 101 away shuttle, well, okay? Well, you, know, uh, you know, the problem is, is it's too standard for me. I'm, I'm used to dealing with very advanced spacecraft. I don't think that you guys understand the full situation. We are on a shuttle heading to an alien spacecraft, and we don't know what's on it. And I'm going to tell <gasps> Let's you- Let's just dock. I'll Let's do it. Let's dock this. Dock. We'll we're going to dock this conversation I order until you we to, dock. I ordered you to dock the ship. I did it before you told me because that's how much I doubt you right now. Just so I can get this on record, I think going to visit this ship is a terrible idea. There could be aliens that are hostile. Which one of these chairs do you guys think is the captain's chair on, uh, on the station? Just bridge? saying. Just saying. Okay. Science entry out. Captain's log. FL-27X. We are now aboard the alien spacecraft. And as we make our way into the main area of this ship, I can tell that this ship was designed by people who were familiar with how to design a ship. Yeah, okay. it seems like you guys got this covered. I'm just gonna chill down the, uh, the far end of the hallway. My sensors indicate there is a science lab here. Hey, you two in the red shirts, can you come with me? You guys go there. Hey, I mean, I'm gonna check out this far end of the hallway. That sounds no, cool. No, no, no. I'm good. Actually, I got that. Sounds cool, man. I'll you and me. Down. You no. and me, Stu. Okay. All right. Tucker and Stu together again. Okay. Stay behind me. I'll protect you if anything happens. Honestly, we don't need to do a play-by-play -play of everything that's happening. We're making our way down the hallway, taking okay. one step in front of the other. Every step is a new world for humans. My guess is that this ship was designed. I, 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 probably. I, I, honestly, we're talking about everything as we're doing it. Stu is explaining what it is that I'm doing while I'm explaining what it is that we're doing. 
We've made it to the end of the hallway, and uh, yeah, it is a hallway full of these cubes. Okay, Tucker, you are the reason I'm on this ship right now. I should be cleaning out a toilet You're or welcome. doing an unboxing video. And You're right welcome. now, I'm. Man, this is not me thanking you. This is me saying, dude, you screwed me. You don't have to. You're welcome. When you've been a captain, as long as I have, you meet people who sometimes don't see their own abilities. Do you know what I'm missing right now? I'm missing the farewell tiki party. I should be hammered right now by myself. Well, now I'm here. Thanks to you. All right, then. I'm sorry, man. I, I, I uh, you know, I, this is this has been a dream for me. I'm gonna be real with you, man. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, I'm, I I'm, have I I have been trying to be. Uh, uh, on, a, on, a, on some kind of exploratory space mission since I was 13 years old. I've been kicked out of almost every school, and I, you know, I save some money up, I get this great opportunity, and you know, I just, I just need this, man. I need this to be cool. Uh, all right, well, I'm gonna go investigate the cockpit, and why don't you just go help else? I heard that there might be something about aliens. So I'll yeah, but I, mean, I I could I could check out the cockpit with you if you want a little. No, I think action. I think your skills are needed with Elsa. Aliens, Elsa, check it out. I'll be in the cockpit. See you soon. Okay. Huh? No, that sounds great. <laughs> All right, I am going to assist our science officer Elsa in her endeavors to space and further Captain Out. Science entry anomalous ship. 12.90D. We are exploring the ship. This is incredible. And my sensors show that we have no alien life aboard. I'm in this incredible equipment room and I'm so happy about it. I mean, we have so much technology I have never seen before. Hey, how you doing? Uh, so uh, what's the status of um, uh, the ship? Captain Tucker. Well, it, uh, there are a lot of things here that we do not know what they do. There are signs, but as you can see, I can't read these. Can you? <laughs> no, I can't, but I can't wait to learn how to read them. This is going to be great. I don't know. It only took about four years to uncover the Rosetta Stone, so <laughs> we're going to be here for a while, Captain Tucker. Well, uh, you know what? I'm going to tell you what I've worked up in uh, looking over this ship is a bit of an appetite. I'm a little hungry. Well, your curiosity should be sated because this is incredible. Yeah. Well, what would really sate this guy is a little bit of Grandma's apple pie. <laughs> Whoa. What just appeared? Is is that an apple pie? Okay, don't touch it. First of all, I'm the captain here. I know exactly how to deal with this. I'm going to punch this pie. Okay, that is so messy. Ugh, you know what? I don't right. think you know what you're doing. And you could have just infected us all with some sort of plague pie or something. What are you talking about? I'm a captain. I've been a captain for uh, with Asia, uh, you know, for... Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, Where are your stripes? I'm undercover captain. What year did you graduate? I'm not a captain, okay? I'm an insurance salesman. What? So you've never even been in space before? N not, I mean, you know, uh, not deep space. Yes, okay? Look, it's, it's all sham, but you know what? Hey, we could dwell on the fact that I completely lied in order to get myself onto this very dangerous mission, or we could just move forward and forget about that and just pretend it didn't happen and just keep calling me captain. You are actually a danger. So you need to accompany me and we're gonna figure this out, okay? Don't touch anything. This pie is quarantined. That is, oh, it's delicious. It really is a good kind of pie. I like you, but I really, I have to do this. Welcome to another episode of Stew Beginnings. All right, well, I'm in the cockpit of this ship and I am bored out of my mind. Um, I should be playing games and avoiding work, but instead I'm here pretending like I'm actually doing something and I'm looking around, there's buttons, shiny things, something that may be some kind of steering device. I honestly just don't care at all. Ugh, whatever. What does this thing do? Oh, sorry. English language confirmed. Register name? Sorry. Uh, I think I uh, pressed the wrong button. Um, could you give me a moment? I'm still searching through my processes. Sure, I'll just I'll sit here for, then for a second. It sounds like you said I want to sit here for a second. Did I get that right? You got that right. Yeah, I'm just. Okay, hold on a moment. Okay. Um... Attempting to determine location. Sure. Uh, I'm sorry. Due to a power loss, it appears that the majority of my memory banks have been corrupted. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to...
press this button here? Maybe, should I press this or just press something? Some people are probably going to have a lot of questions for you. Is there any way you can kind of keep this between us? I don't want... I'll announce everything to the crew in just a moment. I would rather you did not do that, please. <laughs> well, I think maybe I'm just going to... All right, I'm going to turn the mic off because I feel like I'm getting in trouble. Um, all right, uh, bye. Sounds good. I'll still be able to hear everything you say. Captain's Log 482, we are dealing with a mutiny. Uh, my science officer is now escorting me, <laughs> oddly enough, uh, to the cockpit, uh, where she has uh, proclaimed that she's going to put me under uh, arrest. I can hear all of this. We're walking together. Stu, thank goodness you're here. Listen. Stu, she is freaking out because I made a pie and, He you know, punched it. Who punches pies? Basically, who would punch a pie? A. B. Everybody. Who would punch a space pie? Who wouldn't? If there was a pie I, right now, I, you'd, I know you'd want to Why would you do that? Thing. Anyways, guys, I need to introduce you to something. Um, hmm? Sorry, this is the group. There's nobody sorry. here. Sorry. I'm sorry that you're saying that, but... Yeah. No. Or you're sorry that we're a group? I'm sorry, too. No, Stu. Just... I really am. Guys, I'm sorry. stop talking for one second. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yes? This is sorry, you guys. Hello. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. The desire to both eat and punch things is extremely human. Okay, where's that voice coming from? I'm ready to punch it. Where's is it? Where's the voice coming from? Is this man punching the air, the captain of the yes, ship? Yes, no, alien. No, I am captain. the captain. No, she, Why he, would he be the he captain? Is not. My is name not is captain. Tucker, and I'm the captain. No, he isn't. That's not. No. Tucker as captain. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is not good. Okay, did you know he was a tourist? He knows nothing. He cannot be captain. Unfortunately, it's too late as. Tucker has already been identified as the captain in my protocols. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. Let me just make this clear. Now, I, I, I am the captain of, the, of this ship? Yes, sir. You are effectively in charge. <laughs> except for I'm mostly in charge. It's a very terrible qualifying process, by the way. A- alien voice. Where do, uh, where's the captain sit? The captain sits near where that very opinionated female human is now sitting. Hey, can there's you nothing wrong with being opinionated. If you're a, a, can you move okay, out of the way? I'm moving. Uh, AI... Uh, your name is what? Uh, sorry. Registered name. Sorry. It, who did that? Did you? You did it, didn't you, Stu? I that. Yes, I did. But yeah. activating the nothing protocol, entering wormhole. Uh, okay, that sounds like something I don't want to be a part of. So can you before? But before we go to the wormhole, can I be left off in like a little pod or something? Entering wormhole in ten. Three oh. capable space hey. astronauts. Oh God. One. No. Disembodied alien voice are embarking on a great adventure, and I, as the lead, will guide them. Entering wormhole. Science entry anomalous ship 12.90E. Wow, wow, wow. Elsa Rankford reporting here. So we are inside a wormhole, and I'm very excited, and at the same time, a little scared. And I'm also scared that everybody around me is kind of incompetent, but. You know, I kind of have that feeling anyway in life, but um, I'm talking a lot. So anyway, I'm excited to see what we happens. If we survive, this is going to be the greatest discovery of humankind, and I'm really excited to, uh, to tell my parents about it because they really should give me some ups. Science log out. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Stew and False. Okay, so I am just gonna kind of check around and poke around this AI database and, uh, okay, so, uh, sorry. Yes. Where are you from? Are you from a place? You know, I'm really not sure. I'm having a very hard time accessing my memory banks. I thought I'd made that clear, but apparently humans need to be told things seven to eight times before it sticks. Seven to eight times. So what do you think about humans so far, huh? Well, so far I find you a very fascinating species. I was able to download a bit of information about you. Unfortunately, most of it seems to be tied to the early 2000s of your time. So I know a bit more about Hillary Duff than I meant to. And what do you think about Tucker? He's kind of a kind of a tool, isn't he? Captain Tucker? Yeah, I, what, if, if you want to call him Captain, that's fine. But I don't, he's a tool, like I said. You're not wrong. He tries really <laughs> hard, doesn't he? <laughs> he's he's he one certainly of those does. hard guys. Hey, um... This is kind of a weird question, but I feel like, and I would never offer this to anyone else, but would you maybe want to listen to some of my podcasts? You know, I think I might. Cool. All right, well. Not right now, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Well, this was Stu and False, and uh, we're signing off. Captain's Log, L6, Blue 6. I'm the captain now. This is one of those days when a boy becomes a man, and that day is today for me. 
I have an opportunity to find my family, but more importantly, I have an opportunity to do what I was born to do, and that's to explore space. I can't imagine what adventures we're going to get into. I'll probably find a whole planet that's nothing but water. That will might be a problem because I can't swim. Man, it is going to be an adventure, but I can't get carried away. I've got to remember that I'm responsible for every soul on this vessel. Captain Tucker? I'm the captain. Hmm? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Would you please report to the bridge? Yes, one sec. Just give me... Give me one second, because uh, today's an important day for mankind. Huh. Mankind, that word should have new meaning for all if of us If you could today. just hold that thought and report to the bridge, we'd appreciate it. Just give me one second while I wrap this thing up. <sighs> the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday. Just report to the bridge. You got it. Uh, this is Captain's Log uh, to space, but further, Captain out. <phone rings> Captain's Log, L Triangle 14. I'm reflecting upon the story of the toad and the stone. There once was a toad who sat along the river when a stone rolled on top of it and the toad died. Are we the toad in this story or are we the stone? I have a folklore degree that it actually doesn't exist. Okay. I want to tell you, Tucker, uh, I have had a lot of mixed feelings about you as a person and as qualifying individual, but I just don't even care right now because we are in such an interesting place that I'm going to accept your leadership as long as you don't kill us and allow me to do whatever I want, basically. Okay? Truce? Yes. Great. I wanted to advise the crew that we are indeed about to exit the wormhole. Well, I want to take this moment before we exit this wormhole to tell both of you that I am incredibly honored that you decided to join my crew. This is not by choice. I'd love to be in the inner circle as we prepare to exit this wormhole. <gasps> this is Captain Chip Hogg with the official Captain's Long. Um, boy oh boy, where does a captain begin? It started out normally, and then a strange ship appeared Elsa, the lead science officer, a woman I often hated and misunderstood, who I now have accepted as my daughter in a mere 15 to 20 seconds. She and about 38 to 40 others boarded that ship. They're gone. What do I do now? Do I report it to my superiors? That leads the question, does any man really have a superior? I suppose if I report it to myself, that's all the reporting that needs doing. I'm sure she'll be back. I'm sure I'll see those others. Young Tucky with his fake emblems upon his fake captain's hat. That slob of a guy who kept doing those, what do they call them, podcasts that no one will ever hear. Will I see them again? Probably not. But then again, does anyone really see anything in space? This is Captain Chip Hogg, signing off forever, or at least for a little while. Voyage to the Stars was partially improvised by and stars Steve Berg as Stu Merkel, Felicia Day as Science Officer Elsa Rankford, Colton Dunn as Captain Tucker Lentz, and Janet Varney as Sorry, the AI. With special guest Gary Anthony Williams as Trip Hogg. Voyage to the Stars was created by Ryan Koppel and produced by Morgan Kruger, Ryan Koppel, and Janet Varney. All dialogue was recorded by Stephen Ray Morris at Starburn Studios. Story producing and editing provided by David Burgess. The coordinating producer is Josh Richman. The supervising editor is Brett Morris. Sound designed by Ryan Connor and Devin Torrey Bryant and title theme composed by Brett Morris. Voyage to the Stars is a production of Madison Wells Media in association with Earwolf and Stitcher. You can listen to ad-free new episodes of Voyage to the Stars Plus, exclusive bonus episodes only on Stitcher Premium. For a free month trial, go to stitcherpremium.com and use promo code VOYAGE. Hey, this is Stu Marco here, and I'm doing a blog. And this blog's topic today is the awesome new Earwolf podcast called The Supergroup that's out now for free. 
Uh, Stu, I actually got a transmission about this, if I could contribute. It is hosted by someone named Tawny Newsom from something called Bajillion Dollar Properties, and the so-called Earwolf podcast, Yo, Is This Racist, uh, and Alex Kleiner, who some people may know from Second City. Not me. I don't know what Second City is. Everyone knows what Second City is, except for you. Okay, uh, let me, let, maybe this will make it more clear. On each episode of The Supergroup, Tawny and Alex invite a comedian and a musician to collaborate on a song with them. Incredible people like Ted Leo... Paul F. Tompkins, Janet Varney, and Sashir Zamata are on it. I like three of four of those people. My understanding is that together they take you through the process step by step from inspiration and writing to recording and mixing, culminating in a brand new piece of human music. The podcast is actually hilarious and the songs are definitely legit. Get ready for The Supergroup! <laughs> 